the opportunity to work forms uh, with Seiyu Yafin. And the biggest uh, thing that people don't understand is that many of the forms have to be worked based on your size, the opponent's size, and as Americans, when they come back to each cut, everything was the same. You know what I mean? You remember that? Everything, every kick was so high, everything, this was that. You have to adjust the form based on the height. Seo Yag himself told me that lunge was because Kisha Funakoshi was shorter than most of the people he was teaching in the college at the time. And he actually did this with his move. And he would dive into you. In other words, he didn't just do it. He dove into you. You have to watch practice in that. But let me use you. He would he would come in and he would hit maybe stomach. And again, that's another point. Depending on the size of the guy. I watched you when Ed Lake was teaching stomach 25. If the guy's much bigger than you, it can be the crease. If he's near your size, it can be 25s. If he's shorter than you, or whatever, it can be liver 14. Do you understand that? That's based on size. So you don't just do it and set out for a region. But as the guy goes to move it, he's going to move strong. And if you are shorter, you're actually going to leave in and then catch him. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> you all right? Yeah, that first one's slippery. Yes. <laughs> you're actually going to go in, and it nullifies the hands. Now you have to watch practice of that. I gave him a little harder shot than I probably should have. When we're, when we're on video camera, anything goes. <laughs> That's why not only you guys do it to me. <laughs> but you have the idea of what the move is for. You don't just put them, and if the person's taller than you, you let this, you dive in. You can even take a step in. Now, if you do it right, uh, let me use you, Cliff. I want to walk through this, because I don't want to hurt anybody. And if that person has glasses on, you leave them on. Not in this case, because we're practicing, but you would just come right up on the glasses and take them into his eyes. But that kind of goes like this. And as the hands climb up, you have the back of the hands with your fire coming right up under both sets of triple warmers 23. Now, now I want to ease off on this, but as he doubles over, this actually, as he doubles down, would be the, the rising technique, would be the rising technique. And I didn't want to do them both on the same guy. I held back at the last minute because I saw how hard I hit him below. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. So, sir. So you all right? Are you okay? I did this as light as I could because you are messing with the person's vision and his eyes. So I, again, just tap. That's why Kata was created. So you can practice that move with meaning and not do it on somebody. I would go to my dojo and we would walk through it the way you're doing here. And then when I do the kata, this would be with meaning. And I know why the hands are coming up. And really, if you hit him hard here and he doubles down, this climb is just gonna catch you under both sets of eyes. If that doesn't do it, which it will, this is going to take him out on both triple warmer 17. And in that case, you're, there is a chance of killing him. That's him. Because this is going to fire him off. You hit him in the adrenal crease, you have everything from there lit up. And you're to dive in. You're to dive in. You ain't supposed to be easy with it. You're to dive in. Gishu Funakoshi was shorter than most of his people. He was teaching in the college at the time. And that's actually when he added that. And they thought, look, when he did the cut alone, he's old. <laughs> but when he demonstrated on somebody, and I think I have pictures of that, by the way, of him doing it. And he's hitting a guy like that. He's bent over, but the guy's also bent like a U. The letter U, the guy doubled this way. And boy, you could just see where the hand's rising. He goes to grab or muscle you. This, this is the kick out. And this, this is actually the move that you're diving down for. Now you have to watch when you do that because you're running to jerk the guy's neck. 
But if he grabs you in a muscle, you can run a knee, you can run a knee, and then take the head, and then down he goes. The kata also has, the other version has this. And once again, I got that actually from Seiyu Iyata, but the guy was diving to take you down. You remember in the days of uh, martial arts, jiu-jitsu was the first art, but there was also uh, sumo people, and they tried to take you to the ground, and this is a guy diving and goes to dive at you, and this is double punches where I hit earlier under triple warmers. And he, uh, once Kanku died, Kanku show. He did several versions. Kusaku was the original kata. They started breaking them down, and then it is said, and it's said in writing that the Pinon katas, or Heon katas, were a breakdown of Kusaku. When Kusaku was first taught, uh, it was actually a man from China in Okinawa, is the way the story goes, and it was told that's still true today. And does anybody know what Kushanku means? Yes or no? No. No? no. It actually is like saying ambassador. Like we have an ambassador to another country. And to this day, there is a Kushanku from China over in Okinawa. That don't mean he knows Sakata. You understand? The particular man that was teaching it at that time was, was a Kushanku. And that's how I was told. And I, this is what I was told. Whether it's true or not, I don't know, but I was told this. And this is in writing. And I was also told to this day there is a Kushanku from China to Okinawa. So that's what it means. He went over there and he taught several of the people some of the moves that were back, didn't complete anything, and that became Pinon 1. He actually, no, actually what he did was he taught this guy in his school uh, what we call Pinon 1, but he taught this school, the second version, which comes out of Akusan Ko, which became Pinon 2. Then he wanted you to teach him that version, you to teach him that version when you got it correct so he could come back and work with you on the moves of it. That's what I was told, that's in writing also. That's how some styles do Pinon 1, and it's really Pinon 2, and Pinon 2 is Pinon 1. So when people come up to me and go, Pinon 1, what do you do? I say, show me how you start yours, because they do it that way. It's like Ishinru does the Hanchi the opposite of some of the other styles. The two, types of the two Shimabuka brothers caused that. One taught the other, the other one, the Kata, and they taught it facing. So when I went like this and I went like that, you were going to the left, I was going to the right. Does everybody understand that? And they were also told the same thing I was told. It doesn't matter. People go, yes, you should, you start left or right. It doesn't matter. You're going to repeat it. You're going to go the other way if you do that kind of a correct? Yeah. yeah. So what does it matter if you go left or right? People come up to me, should I go left of mine? You go right. Do I show I go right? You go left? It doesn't matter. You're going to repeat it. So that's how that works. Two brothers taught each other facing. Katas were more individual. That's what I mentioned earlier. Katas moves were adjusted by your size. We just taught them as group because the military brought them back, had a class of 45 people. Until then, that didn't really happen. When they worked out, it was individuals. And I showed you something, I went and showed you something, and we worked on your size. We came back, it was the military, everybody line up, everybody has to do this, has to do that, and you have to do it together. That's where we lost a little bit. Okay, I had a man that just went over to Okinawa and he was training with his master. And uh, he said this move, he did this move. He did this move. How many people do that move anywhere in a car? Yes? Okay. Everybody that does it, just stand up and do it. Stand up and do that move. Do that move. Stay there. Stay there. And don't move. Don't move. You're close. Now, stay there, but look around the room. Look around. Look at everybody else. Stay there, but look around, please. You too, look around. Look over there at all these other people. Look at them. You actually probably, you got it, you probably don't know it. 
you got it, you actually know it, because I've taught that somewhere before, I think, right? Yes, yeah. Or Cooper taught you. Okay, look around the room. 99.9% of you are incorrect. You're incorrect. So why do the move? Now, if you know why you're doing it, then you do it correct. Am I right? Huh? Yes. Everybody take, take your middle finger and put it on your third eye. I'm going to make sure you know where that is. <laughs> it's in the little indent. So if you're down at the bridge, you go right on this indent, this third eye. So go to your third eye. You're actually to take your hand and cover your third eye. People had their hand here. People had their hand here. Did you look around the room? People had their hand up here. People had their hand back here. They had it here, 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 they had it everywhere. Some were close, you were near the third eye. You're to be over the third, not touching you. I'm only making a point here. You're to cover the third eye. Got that? You have three areas that we attack for energy. You have the tongue the end. You have the heart and the third eye. The third eye can be controlled visually, and with heart aids. Heart aid. Got that? You're to take and cover your third eye and aim your heart aid at his third eye. Got it? That's the way it's to be. How did he get in correct? Let me explain this. I just had a man come back from Okinawa that I taught the correct way. He was with his sensei, he didn't tell his sensei anything. But if you get in front of me, that's why I was backing up when you, when you were doing it. I thought you were going to do it correctly. You didn't do it correctly, I didn't care. If you cover your third eye, the energy feeds through and pumps hard eight into your opponent's third eye and makes him weaker. You got that? Here's how it became incorrect. Sit out here and just do your, do your move, that move. And put the other hand out. He used to have his heart ache right at third eye. So right about, right about there. That's perfect. That's perfect. Now I actually feel that. So I'm moving. A man just came back from Okinawa. Oh, I taught that to him. His instructor was there and went, and he turned and says, Is this, how's this sensei? And the Okinawa oh, instructor actually went like this. I just got this story. And the instructor went, <coughs> Like it's gonna hurt him. He went. <laughs> so he went the right way. And the instructor went. That's how it got incorrect. Understand that? The instructor didn't want you aiming out at him. He's standing in front of you teaching. And you're aiming the third eye. You're controlling his energy with your third eye. You all know what the heart ache does to the third eye by pushing the guy over, yes or no? Yes. 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 When you aim your heart ache at his third eye, all of his pressure points in this region will be twice as vulnerable to three times as vulnerable. In other words, the same hit will, will be two to three times is much pain. You got that? And what you can do, we're going to run some tests. Use you a minute. Normally, I would aim it at his third eye and hit him. I don't want to do it because he's going to level. So if you want to practice that back in the dojo, have fun. Do that back home. But if everybody here aimed it at his third eye, and hit him, and you do not have to be against it. You do not have to touch it. You just aim it at it and hit him. What I want, I'm gonna have you do is try to put him down, your little test, don't resist me. I didn't do anything to you. <laughs> resist. There you go. I know I ain't that strong, I shouldn't be able to put you down with all fingers. Because it's me, you don't have to go along with it. You understand that? In fact, I would prefer you didn't. <laughs> he goes, I would prefer I did. <laughs> it's going to hurt less. 
No, I want you to hit everybody and, and go like this, and then go like that. I want you to, he's resisting, resist. And actually, did you feel pain? Yes. Yes. Sir. Not here. Have them on or no, no, leave them on. Okay. <laughs> you're going to have shoes on to fight, aren't you? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. you're grabbing him. Uh, just grab his gi. Let's say it's his throat. It don't matter. But grab his gi, and you're not letting go. You 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 really mean it. I I you all know if I take hard eight, I can just do this and take him right down. Same thing if he's on a bar stool. Practice that in your dojo. Get a guy in a chair. He's sitting in a chair. Just take his hard eight, lift him up and away, and he'll go right up and away. If he's on a bar stool up and away. If it's a drunk laying on the floor, he'll pull his head back. And you can peel him right up with his finger and take him up off the floor, work on that kind of stuff. But all this tells you that in the kata. Every time you have a move in a kata does that, if you put it over the heart eight, it should remind you every time. You grab him. Yes, sir. Just grab the key, be mean. You don't even know I'm involved in that. I just put it on heart eight. And down, it takes no effort. It's not an effort thing. The minute he grabs and puts tension, he puts tension in the area that heart eight represents. There's, when, when heart eight controls these points, it makes them two to three times more vulnerable for hitting. You'll feel it if you do it at the dojos. It weakens you here when you do it here. If you put it here and aim it at his, you cover yours but you feed some of your energy. You've got to imagine feeding some of your energy through your heart eight to fire it into him. Fire it into him. Same here. I don't just put my hand on this on that with heart eight. I picture some fire coming out of heart eight to stop him. If he's weak on all these points, the more tension, and we don't care for a strike, grab him because he looks like a good, strong guy. I was surprised to find out he wasn't, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Only having fun, only having fun. He's going, I'm going to get him later. <laughs> but anyway, when, when they do that, the more tension and the stronger he is, the easier that works. And if you work with police or security people, this should remind you what you should teach him. You don't go and tell him about kata and cover your heart ache, but you go and tell him if you want to separate two people that really have it at it, all you need to do is touch like that. You actually don't even have to touch, but if you get into that, that'll blow their mind. So you don't want to go there. For the, the general public, it's touch. But keep in mind, <laughs> this is a very similar move. In fact, a lot of the moves in forms that are similar. That's why people go, well, I don't, like he said, I do it in one so or I do it in so it don't matter. If I, early on I used to tell people, if I'm teaching pressure points, and I teach you five or six that you know work, and you make up your own kata, aren't you going to include them? Yes, sir. Yes, yes? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's why there's so many shooter moves, because that was an open, basic green brown belt teaching technique. This, this move was basic, and that's why it was in so many katas. You have a guy punching, and, and, and the move was to do this. Got it? You ain't fast enough if you're trying to stop me. Because uh, I'm going to ruin that nose. I'm sorry. I'm uh, fast too, you know. But anyway, that's just a basic explanation. I always like when they go to block. And I go, even if I let you, you can. I'll tell you I'm going to hit you. I want to see you block it. But when I do the move, when I do the move, if, if you know the meaning of that, you make up your own kata, you're going to put that in. Because the, the average fight would be a punch or a grab. You attack the arm, attack the neck. So that's a drilled in thing. That's why that's in so many basic katas. Here. But then when you start getting up to the higher belt katas, they got this. They got the, the uh, Basai has this jump, same jump kick. I break it down on my DVD-8. So we don't need to spend much time on it. But one of the Kusan Kus has it. That doesn't mean he made that up. The Basai guy might have. Or maybe he stole it from the Kusan Ku guy. I don't, I don't know. But it's the same move in two different katas at two different time periods. Basai is a family name. 
I have personally seen the silk drawings with Basai drawn out that are 400 years old and the original version is the Tamarite version. I have personally witnessed that and seen that. It's that simple. And it was drawn out on silk and it's 400 years old and the kata, it was the family and that is the family name and it's not P. Basai, it's Basai. Ba, Ba, it's a family name, that's their name. If you made up a, a kata, it would be lake. It wouldn't be, it would just be lake. And you would do the kata, teach the family. That's the way it went back then. Do you move? That one, oh, stop, that one turns the other way. That one turns the other way. But the move is, do beside me, this is the move. That's the move, and then we go the other way. This is the man that wants to grab at me or do something, and I am to get opposite quadrant. That's what this is for. That's what this represents. When I kick here and pull here, this is the result I get, and I would slam him down here. Everybody see the breakdown? You have to be careful on the head turning, that's why I left it go. But but when you this is the move. Now you could hit, but the whole thing is if you envision that when you do the cutter, you don't need to keep doing it to somebody. I'm I'm doing it to somebody because again practice I like it. <laughs> but you do this, and this would be the move. That gets back that legs move. That's part of it too. But this would be the move, and then the kata has you go, turn the other way. It also has you flip the other way, because sometimes when you kick the guy in the leg, he goes over backwards, and you're going to go after him there to break his neck with the same technique. So that's what the kata is covering. So if you do that version, that's the meaning. 